Okay, so this is the basically the part two of the thing that went up yesterday. Um, yesterday I did the worst uh, seasons, or worst teams of the 2020 season. Um, and this time we're going to do teams that had the their best um, seasons, uh, season, best season last year that did, you know, really good last year, uh, exceeded expectations. Um, and we're going to start out here at number 10 with Arizona. Now, I said at the beginning of the year, um, well, really before the year, I thought they were my Super Bowl uh, sleeper pick. And I stood by that uh, throughout the season uh, until they got eliminated in, uh, I think it was like week 16. <laughs> um, DeAndre Hopkins was a big help for this team. And, uh, you know, Kyler t took a step up from his uh, rookie year. Uh, this year got better. And, uh, you know, I think their defense did decently. Uh, the rest of their offense was decent, too. Um, so I think they really showed that this team is not lightning in a bottle. Or not. Um, this team, I don't know, not... Let me restart that. This team isn't just a one lightning strike and done year. I think this team is going to slowly get better and better. Um, they have a bunch of young players on there. Um, I think this team, within the f five years, five-year time frame, I think they can make the Super Bowl. So, um, number nine, the Bucks. They haven't been in the playoffs uh, since, was that 2000, 2001, 2002, or whatever? Uh <laughs> Well, I, I can't even remember. Last time they made the playoffs, they won the Super Bowl, and they are right back in the Super Bowl this year um, with a stacked offense. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know, I need to go over it. We've talked, I've talked about this at length, um, and I mean, they're they're good. <laughs> and Tom Brady still has another year on his con under his contract, um, so you know, I don't think he retires this year. I think he's going to come back again next year. Um, Oh my God! If they go back to back, can you can you imagine if they go back to back? Uh, uh they do have their hands full with the Chiefs, who already beat them earlier this year. But uh, you know they've become a really good team. Uh, Jameis, you know, is just not that good because of all his interceptions. Uh, now you upgrade your QB, and now you have a very good team. You get Gronk, uh, you get AB, who I, we're not even going to talk about AB and all that off the field crap. That's happened, um, but, you know, they're back in the Super Bowl. So, next, the Rams. <sighs> um, they're at eight because I think they're a QB away from being elite, just like the Bucks. You get rid of Goff, you bring in, oh, God, you bring in, like, Watson or, uh, I, I mean, there's, there's uh, I think there was, like, is it 15 QBs or 18 QBs or whatever that, you know, could be on the move this offseason? You bring in someone better than Goff, um, I think you have a sh really good shot. You had the number one defense last year. Um, you just needed an offense to, you know, balance that out. And it was, did not work with Goff. And yes, he did get injured. But even before his injury, they and, I mean, they're just, he, he's not that good. So uh, they had a really good season. Um, and I think they are a QB away from being, you know, a Super Bowl contending team. Seven, the Colts. Now, it sucks because they're probably not going to be on this list next year if I do make this next year because Phillip Rivers is retiring. Um, so now they got to go, you know, either trade for, or, uh, yeah, trade for a QB in the uh, free agency or draft a QB um, in the draft. Um, but this year... I mean, they did really good. Uh, they kind of went under the radar, I, I, a little bit under the radar. Um, you, you know, they, they had, it. I think it was the first six or seven weeks they had the number one defense. Um, and then, you know, by the end of the year, the Rams took it over. Um, and, you know, that offense was, you know, pretty good. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, I, I will always support Jonathan Taylor because he's a Wisconsin Badger. Um, and so... You know, it's always fun watching him out there, and they did not use him until, you know, second half of the year. And then when they started using him, they started doing really good. And they made the playoffs. Obviously, you lost to the Bills, but, <coughs> excuse me, but, you, you know, you had a really decent year. Uh, number six, the Titans. <laughs> they did not go 9-7 and seven this year. <laughs> um, they had, was it 13-3? and three? 
twelve and four or thirteen and three. I can't. Where I think I think it was. I can't even remember. They but they they did really good. They won the South. Um, you know, you have Ryan Tannehill for a while. You have Derrick Henry for a while. Um, you got to fix that defense. But I mean, you made it to the division around uh, uh, division around um, before losing. Oh no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Wild card round. Um, before getting bounced by the Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson is now one one and two in playoffs. <laughs> Um, you know, but besides that, you played pretty decently when teams can't stop, uh, Derrick Henry. Uh, I mean, it's almost game over at that point, but when they can, you know, it's hard for Ryan Tannehill to do all the work himself. So, uh, this year, you know, at, on this list, uh, what is this again? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yeah, you're at 6, um, because, you know, they're a good football team. Yeah, I mean, you're just all around good. You just got to fix that defense. Number five, the Chargers. Now, this is more so looking into the future um, as compared to this year. But this year really showed that Justin Herbert is the guy. They have weapons for him. Keenan Allen is, uh, I think he's still under contract for another year or two. Um, you know, when you have Austin Eckler healthy, I mean, he's good. You have other weapons, a wide receiver, um, you know, tight end, running back. Uh, and that defense, again, uh, Joey Bosa. Um, I, can't, I can't think of anyone else on that team. <laughs> but, you, you know, you have a decent defense. Um, and, you know, you you played pretty good for, you know, a rookie QB took over for Tyrod Taylor literally like three weeks in, two weeks in. Um, and you took the Chiefs in the OT the first time. Um, and then you beat a uh, backup Chiefs the second time. So, I mean, eventually you're going to get, you know, enough weapons on defense and offense, and you're going to be able to contend with the Chiefs. You're going to be able to contend with um, the Ravens, uh, the Bills. You know, you're going to be able to contend with these teams in a couple years. Um, but this, this year showed really good flashes of that team that you can become. And I think they just got a, a new head coach. Um, did they draft a new, was no, not a, not draft, but I think they, was it them who got the GM? Who got the, I forget who got the GM. Someone got a GM, a tool. <laughs> it might have been them. Um, uh, I don't remember exactly, but they did get a new head coach. Um, and you know, uh, I think you could, you just have a really bright future, but this year showed it. Uh, number four, the Dolphins. <sighs> Tua is not the guy. Um, well, let, okay, let me, let me not say that. The fact that he needs uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick to back him up, come in at, at the end of a game, shows that you know he's really struggling um, out there. So I, I don't know what you do um, at QB, uh, but he's struggling. Tua is really struggling. You're not going to have Ryan Fitzpatrick to ever to back him up and save his butt and win games. Um, you had that this year. Good on you. Fell, out, uh, fell short of a playoff uh, run. <coughs> <clears throat> but this team is going to be good. They have a good defense. Uh, I mean, you kept the Chiefs in check pretty much throughout that game. Um, you struggled really badly against the Bills. <laughs> um, but, you know, you get that defense a little bit better. You get a better offense. And uh, I think you're going to be contenders. Uh, number three, the Washington football team. Oh my God, what a team this has become. They started out, beat the Eagles week one. Um, I had the Eagles winning the division. <laughs> um, they come out swinging, beat the Eagles by week six, week five, somewhere somewhere around there. Whenever they faced the Rams, they had Alex Smith come in. Obviously, he got you know blown up by those that number one defense. Um who, I, I, again, like I said, I believe the Colts were number one defense at the beginning of the year before the Rams took it over. So I guess it would be number like two or three defense. Um, <coughs> so, you know, you started out a little shaky. And then you got uh, better with, you know, COVID is running around. You had Ron Rivera fighting cancer. Alex Smith got hurt. Um, and, you know, you got better as the season Kept going. You made the playoffs for the first time in five, six years. Um, was that, I think the last time was was that RG three? 
I think the last time was RG3. So that was like literally the early 2010s. Um, yeah, so close to like six, seven years ago. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, you know, Taylor Heineke stepped up, played amazingly against the Bucks, um, only for them to fall up short. Um, but this team, you get a healthy Alex Smith back. I don't, I, I think they're going to keep Taylor Heineke after a performance like that. <laughs> um, you know, you get wide receivers, you get a little bit better defense, which by the way, that front four was really good. So I think you, you draft better corners. Um, and you get wide receiver, you, you, I mean, you're set at, uh, running back. I think you get better at O line. Um, there's not much that this team needs to get better, uh, to make a deep playoff run. I think they can do it within the next two or three years. Um, but the, I mean, just this year really showed that they can be good. Uh, bunch of switch ups. Um, Dan, now Dan Schneider is still uh, GM, but you know, there's, He'll probably be out within a year or two, and you'll have uh, hopefully someone better. Um, and, uh, you know, I like um, Red Wolves as a name, or uh, I saw Red Tails isn't bad. Um, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple of good names. I, I I know there's a report that they were talking about uh, keeping football team. Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't like that, and I know, you know, not a lot of people do. I know some people do, but, you know, We'll see what they do with a name, too, coming up in the future. But I think they had a really good season here. Um, and moving on to number two, the Buffalo Bills. Now, I was debating about putting them in the top three because they just made the playoffs last year. Um, and so it's not a huge jump up um, from last year. Um, but the fact that Josh Allen looked like the MVP this year after last year not looking that good Came back, looked like the MVP. To Stefan Diggs, big help. Uh, you can argue that Bills won that trade. You really can. Um, but, you know, this this team has looked a lot better than it did last year. Now, the defense is still shaky. Uh, it, it might be worse than last year. Maybe. Um, but, you know, you got a home playoff game. You made it to the NFC Championship game. Uh, you won a playoff game for the first time in a while. Uh, like 95 was the last time you had a home playoff game. Uh, I mean, this team is going to be a contender uh, for, against the Chiefs two years max. Um, maybe even next year, depending on what happens next year. Uh, we'll see. But this team is going to get better and better. You dra I mean, they literally just have to focus on defense pretty much. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's literally about it. Um, so that's, that's not a lot, but they had a really, really good season. Uh, Josh Allen is probably going to end up the, uh, runner up for MVP, um, behind Aaron Rodgers. Um, but you can, you could argue, uh, that, you know, he, he deserves some votes. So, and, uh, this brings me a lot of joy for this fan base and to put them at number one is, the Cleveland Browns. This brings me a lot of joy. I'm so happy for the fan base. So happy for all of the true Browns fans who stuck with this team, who haven't won a playoff game in a long, long time. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2002. That was the longest drought uh, in, the, in the NFL history. And the Bucks is the second longest, I believe. Um, this team, oh my God. Three years ago, they were 0-16. Three short years ago, they were 0-16. And, and Miles Garrett, um, and I can't remember the wide receiver, but there, there's, uh, and I think there was like a lineman too. There's only a handful of guys that were on that 0-16 team. Three years later, those handful of guys not only went to Heinz Field, smacked the life out of the Steelers they advanced to the divisional round and had some chances to beat the Chiefs this Browns team is going to be good in the future Kevin Stefanski should win coach of the year he should you want to give it to Sean I I, I can't argue too much against Sean McDermott um, the Bills head coach but the fact that and Kevin Stefanski's first year took him to the playoffs 
with double digit record. That hasn't happened since last time they went, uh, went to the. Oh no, was that twenty eleven? Last time they had double digit uh, wins. I, I I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> um, but I mean, he turned this team around. Uh, now you obviously. You had Odell go out, and Baker realize that you can actually spread around uh, the ball around to people, and they can be good. Um, so we'll see what happens with Odell. If you don't force speed Odell, and you know you have the Browns spreading the ball around, uh, I mean this team can be deadly on offense. You got Landry, you got Chubb, you got Kareem Hunt, um, Peoples Jones, who I think is really underrated. I think he's going to become a really good wide receiver in the future. Um, this offense is stacked with talent. And they finally have a good coach to make this talent even better. Defensively, you still have Miles Garrett, who was just, um, well, I think it was uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Was that like two years ago, three years ago, or whatever? Um, and then last year, you know, the, you had the whole helmet incident. And if that had never happened, there's talk of him actually being the uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Um, so, I mean, you got Miles Garrett out there. You got a decent defense out there. Um, Denzel Ward, who is pretty good. Um, I mean, you get a little bit better defense and a, be a little bit better O-line. And, I, I mean, this team is going to be pretty close to unstoppable. I, I, I really think so. I think a healthy Browns team and, you know, you better the O-line, you better the defense a little bit. Um, I think this team is going to be a fun team. And plus, Austin Hooper at tight end, who they just got in the uh, last offseason, was a big help for them, too. Um, so this, uh, I, I can't, this this team is just really fun to watch. Um, I still like Baker. A lot of people are down on Baker. Um, you know, I think they should get rid of him. He proved the haters wrong this year. I think he did. I think he is their franchise QB. I think so. This team, again, Three years ago, 0-16, making the playoffs for the first time since 2002, going on the road for the first time since the 60s and winning a playoff game, advancing to the divisional round. <sighs> this this team is something else, man. This this team is really something else. And they, I could not put anyone above them. I could not. There was no thought in my mind of putting the Bills, of putting the Washington football team, the Dolphins, you know, none of these teams. There was no thought of putting anyone ahead of the Browns. You couldn't. Just after their season they had in 2020, there's, there is a lot of hope for Browns fans. There is. This team was just amazing to watch. Um... I have hopped on the bandwagon. I, uh, you know, I felt so bad for Browns fans uh, watching that 0-16 season where it literally slip away um, because uh, Week 17, that one uh, receiver could catch a ball who he's no longer in the NFL now. Um, and, you know, just three years later, they're making the playoffs, making the division around. And this, uh, you know, it just makes me so happy for this team. Um, I love Bills Mafia, too. They, they um, After they beat Lamar Jackson, after he got concussed, um, and had to get pulled from the game. Um, after the game, Bills Mafia went and donated to uh, Lamar's favorite charity. So I mean, these these <laughs> they get a lot of people. There's a lot of good people in these you know fan bases. Um, I think Browns have a, a fans have a lot of hope. I think this is, they deserve it. They really do. So um, I cannot put anyone ahead of them. Uh, and I'm <laughs> I can't wait to see this team two years, three years, four years down the line. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's going to wrap this up. Like the video, share it around. Don't forget to subscribe, and we are out of here. Peace.